Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and you're watching Lynn's Cat Adventure and today we are adventuring through another Bible story just like we do every single Friday. So today we are looking at a very obscure little um, passage in the book of Ezra. I was just reading through it, I was listening to the audio Bible and as I was listening I just felt this real emphasis on a very random set of verses and I had to do a double take with God and go... Are you, are you sure about this? Like this, this is so random and obscure. Um, and, but the more I started digging into it, the more I found. And so let me share with you what I found today. Um, so in the book of Ezra, chapter two, verses 59 to 63, I will read them out just so you can be as confused as I was. Um, so it says, and these were the ones who came up from Tel Mela, Tel Hasha, Cherub, Adon, and Imma. But they could not identify their father's house or their genealogy, whether they were of Israel. The sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, and the sons of Nakoda, 652. And of the sons of the priests, this is where it gets important, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Koz, and the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite. And was called by their name. These looked for their listing among those who were registered by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore, they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with the Urim and Thummim. Okay, um, if you don't know what the Urim and Thummim are, that's not going to make any sense to you. If you don't understand... Um, the priestly duties, then that's not going to make any sense to you. So let me kind of unpack to you what was going on, even with the genealogies and why they were defiled and who are these guys. So in, in this passage, we're specifically looking at this guy called Barzillai, who married a daughter of some other guy called Barzillai, the Gileadite, and kind of took his name. Um, so because I'm a bit of a Bible nerd and I like listening to stories or reading stories, um, like novelized versions of the of Bible stories, I already knew kind of who this first Barzillai guy was. And so I knew kind of where to look and it's found in um, 2 Samuel um, chapters 17 and 19. Um, this old guy called Barzillai um, looked after King David when David's son Absalom you know, staged a coup and tried to kill his dad and, you know, took over the country for a while there. And this guy called Barzillai, um, he was 80 years old, um, good, good old guy. Um, and he looked after David and his entourage um, as they were running away and fed them, which was expensive. And it was also risky because now this guy Barzillai is technically... Um, supporting the previous king and not the new king. And so the new king could come and, you know, hurt him, take his stuff, all that kind of thing. And so in the end, Absalom dies and David regains the throne. And David also extends the offer to Barzillai to, hey, come live in Jerusalem with me. I will, you know, give you a lavish life. But Barzillai's 80 years old and he's lived a good life and he's wealthy and he likes his farm life out in Mehola. Um, and so he's like, no, thank you very much. I really appreciate the offer, but there's no point. I'm about to, you know, die. I might as well just be buried in the same grave as my parents. So I'm just going to stay where I am. But hey, you know, take my friend, um, and give him all the honor and wealth that you had planned to give to me. And so he, you know, looks after this other guy and um, is kind of even in a way sponsoring his friend to go to live in the city with David instead of himself. Um, and so there's a lot of honor um, and fame attached to this guy called Barzillai. And I really encourage you to go and check out 2 Samuel 17 and 19 and have a close look at those stories and see what pops out of them for you. Um, but we're not really looking at that part of the story. It's kind of like the backstory here of who the original Barzillai was. But the Barzillai that we're looking at in Ezra is possibly not even called Barzillai by his first name originally. Um, 
So we're actually looking at the sons of Barzillai, the Barzillai who married the daughter of the original Barzillai. This is kind of confusing. Um, and yeah, he he was a Levite. So if you don't know much about Levites, um, basically they were descendant of Aaron. So Moses's brother Aaron, who was given the priesthood, and they were from the tribe of Levi. So Jacob had 12 sons. One of them was Levi. And, you know, their sons all were given the tribes um, in the long run. But Levi... If I recall correctly, him and somebody else, one of the brothers, they went off and did some pretty naughty things and hurt a lot of people. And so they weren't given actual land inheritance. But down the track, God set them apart anyway, redeemed them from their dishonor and gave them the priesthood of all things. Um, and so Levi, the Levites, they are given the, pre the priesthood. So... Aaron is the high priest and all of the firstborn sons from his lineage would be the high, high priest in the temple or the tabernacle, depending on what time period we're in. Um, and yeah, all the other relatives in this tribe would be doing things like just looking after the temple, cleaning it, singing, um, cutting the animal's throats, cleaning up the blood, like just all of that kind of thing, basically just serving the temple, serving God directly. Um, we could kind of parallel them with pastors and elders today in a way, but not really. Um, it's a very different kind of thing, um, but in a similar sort of direction. So when God made the sons of Levi, um, to be the priesthood, he made the entire genealogy down the line for thousands of years to be in this position. That was the calling that he placed on this family's life. And um, so what happens here is when Barzillai, the other Barzillai, um, in Ezra uh, that we see, he has married one of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite, the famous guy who helped David. And because he was really wealthy, because he was really well respected, um, a few other reasons along those lines, basically, he decided instead of keeping his own Levite heritage, um, remembering his own lineage um, and sort of going along that line, at, at some point down the line, especially um, the priesthood was not being used, I guess, especially in like Babylon and Persia and stuff like that. They didn't have a temple, so they didn't need priests. And so I think especially during that time, um, any Levites would have had, I guess, an inclination to not really care about their, their history or their lineage and try to pick a more worldly um, honor for themselves, a, a different route in life. Um, because obviously, you know, whatever God's called us to is no longer a thing. So let's find our own path or whatever. And so, yeah, this guy who married one of the daughters of Bil uh, Barzillai, he didn't seem to care so much about the calling that God placed on his life. And so he rejected that. He turned away from it, maybe not out of spite or anything, um, but just, sorry, my nose is itching. Happens every time. <laughs> um, that's better. Not not so much that he hated being a Levite and didn't want to do that anymore or anything, but it was just more like this is a more honourable thing in the eyes of men, um, and I will take on the name and the honour and sort of preserve this name, even though this is a whole other topic. But Barzillai did have male descendants, so he didn't need somebody to marry one of his daughters and take the family name um, and keep it going like that. That is something that is uh, legally allowed to happen. If you look closely through the first five books of the Bible, it's in there somewhere um, where if a man only has daughters, the daughters are allowed to marry someone within their tribe and that man will take on the, the dad's family name basically and keep that family alive. Um, yeah, but that's not the case here because we know that Barzilla had some male descendants. So even though he did have daughters, he didn't he didn't need anyone sort of taking over the family name for him. So this guy, 
goes and marries one of the daughters and he takes on the name even though it's not necessary for anybody's purpose and in doing so his descendants forget who they actually are they all forget their actual lineage it's lost along the way and that doesn't seem to be much of an issue for hundreds of years until it comes to this point where um during the time of Ezra, you know, the people are returning to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple um, at the king's decree. And, you know, the temple is being reinstated and it's being funded by the Persian government at this point. Um, and is like back returning to its glory in a sense. And all the Levites want to get on board. They want their priestly positions that, you know, have been bequeathed to them over the generations and yet there's a few people a few families that come along who can't find their actual genealogies in like an actual book where they write down everyone I guess like a birth registry um to show yes this is um a person from this particular family like they would have had thousands upon thousands of names to show that yes these people are definitely Levites. This is their grandfather and great-great-grandfather and all that kind of stuff. Because their name was changed and because their focus shifted, um, they lost that privilege. And it says that they were cast aside. It doesn't say cast aside. It says that they were considered to be defiled and that they weren't allowed to do any temple service, at least until they could consult these stones called the Urim and Thummim. One would light up as a yes, another would light up as a no when it was asked a question, kind of like some magic rocks happening in the Bible. <laughs> um, and basically God would, you know, answer questions in that way sometimes. But yeah, these, these people were not allowed and we don't ever find out if they were eventually allowed back in. But at this point along the, along the story, they are considered defiled. They're their calling has been rejected by themselves and along the way this has impacted them, you know, generations later. So I just really only have one point with this. This story has gone a bit longer than I planned, but one, one point really. Don't run away from the call that God has given you um, because, like, just don't try to be somebody who you're not. This guy, Barzillai... Um, who married the daughter of Barzillai, you know, he was trying to be somebody. He was trying to associate himself with somebody that he wasn't. He was a Levite. He didn't need to take on the honor of Barzillai the Gileadite. Yes, he was wealthy. He was influential. He was, you know, well-respected, but Levites had their own special calling and he didn't need to reject that. But because he did, it actually had a huge impact on the people down the line, hundreds of years down the line from himself. It may not have personally impacted, you know, the way that he lived his life, but down the line, he is now considered dishonorable for doing that thing. Um, his descendants would have been kicking themselves or kicking him or something, if they could, um, because by his one decision to change his name, they are completely rejected and considered defiled. They didn't do anything, but this one guy did one thing. He rejected the call in his life. And by, yeah, by doing that, he's actually negatively impacted the lives of his descendants. And back then that was a huge thing. Like you wanted to set up like legacy and, you know, provide the best that you could for as many generations down the track as you could. And what he's doing here instead is just completely ruining their lives. So yeah, just remember this one thing. God has a call on your life and it is very, very unwise to reject that call. You don't know how it could impact people. If you follow the call to the letter as much as possible, you are much more likely to receive a greater harvest for the kingdom. But if you choose to run away from the call, reject it, don't think it's as good as whatever you could come up with on your own, then you're probably going to have a very big negative impact on the people around you, the people following you, even if you don't see it as a negative thing for yourself. So that is my one rebukey little um, message for you today. I did not plan to have it. It kind of popped up out of nowhere. So um, yeah, 
that's all from me today. I will see you again next Friday, um, hopefully with a happier message. <laughs> all right, blessings guys, love you, bye.